On this week's show, should I go into debt to invest in property? In the news, we take a look at the world's worst Airbnb. And we're going to be answering all your property-related questions. Welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an upload. You can catch us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Enjoy this week's show and don't forget to share it with all your friends. Hi, I'm Russell Leeds. I'm Alistair Cunningham. And welcome to the <coughs> Property Investors Podcast. We've got a great, we're going to be talking about uh, debt and yep. leverage, and um, you're going to be showing us the world's worst Airbnb. Yeah, I'm looking forward funny. to it. It's going to be a really good show. Uh, before we get started, have you had a good week? Yeah, it's been all right. Just been uh, been training events, um, lots of back to back training with Crash Course DFE, um, and then we had a few days off for the weekend. So uh, Alistair cool. put the company card behind uh, behind the bar and invited a few friends out uh, at the late, at the Crash Course. How much? How much was the how much was the bar bill? How much was I the bar bill? A couple hundred pound. A couple hundred pound. I think it's just a fraction more than that. I had permission. Just a just a fraction more. Just a fraction more. <coughs> Six grand. Um, <laughs> So he had a really good night. He had a great night. I was in bed, uh, but, Move on. I, but, but I heard it was a storm. I actually had a very chilled out. I mean, obviously we we did the uh, Dilfine Extravaganza, which was really good. Yeah, but it was I, a nice venue. It was a new venue. We've never been there before, and um, yeah, it was very nice. Very very nice. Very nice venue. And then I had a very chilled weekend. What did you get up to? Um, I went to Litch. I went. To, oh, I was living in Litchfield, but mm-hmm. we went down to the park, walked down, had lunch, came back. There's a Oops. really. Is there a? There's a canal go through Litchfield. Is that right? Um. I don't think so. There's water. There's water, yeah. So it's not a canal, is it a river? It's like it's like is a lake. Like, is that like a lake? Right. Do you know yeah. what though? I used to think it was a canal. <laughs> yeah. Until I went to walk alongside the canal yeah. and realised it was actually just a very long, thin lake. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's by by see, ego. Uh, I don't know, but when I've been out, um, out with Samuel there, you, you walk over a bridge and you've got a cathedral yeah, in the background. That, see, I thought that was a bridge, right? And Because and the lake comes up to the bridge. Yeah. But if you look the other side, there's no... There's no oh, water on the other side. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's funny. I yeah, thought, I, thought, I thought, thought it was a bridge. But that is where you mean. It's actually quite nice. What I like about that area there is there's so many nice food restaurants. So like, I've, each time I go, you go to a different restaurant, and yeah, it's like yeah. Mama Thai is the best. Where were we the other day? We were out somewhere the other day on Friday. I remember, and we were like, we walked for ages trying to find somewhere decent to eat, and we just couldn't. Oh my days! Yeah, yeah. Oh, I still had a good week. Oh, I w- that wasn't a good day. We ended up in Newcastle upon under Lyme. Yeah, um, what, but anyway, what a um, dive hole that is! It is a bit of a what dump. a dive hole. We walking couldn't around find the town. Any, even just to get a coffee, we really struggled, didn't we? Yeah, we, we like, ended up we saw Cafe Nero, and we were like, mm, went in. Even that was horrible. It and was we were just, just grotty, like, just grotty. Mm. Ugh, yeah. Anyway, so a lot of people come to us and they sort of say, "Oh, I'm in debt. What should I do? Should I get myself out of debt first? Mm-hmm. What's the difference between good debt and bad debt? What, um, you know, when is it leverage? It's kind of all a bit messy because I don't know about you, but growing up for me." It was like debt was always a bad thing. Yeah. It was you avoid debt at, at all, all costs. costs. Yeah. You know, so like even even things like credit cards and that, I never did any of that. I, I was brought up, you just don't go into debt. Mm. Debt is a bad thing. The only thing you can go into debt is a mortgage. Mortgage, yeah. Outside of that, you buy your car. I used to buy my cars outright. It was yeah. everything. Was what I always, I'd always save up. It was the save up, pay for it. That was how I was brought up. I don't know about you. Yeah. Whereas now I can see that you know what we teach is the clear difference between good debt and bad debt. So what's good debt to you? Good debt is anything anything you buy using somebody else's money that will bring you income, or that will accrue in, accrue as an asset. So an asset basically. Um, Robert Kiyosaki talks about good debt, bad debt. Bad debt. A prime example is like finance on cars, finance on holidays, clothes, anything that's going to cost you money and not actually appreciate in value, um, or bring you an income every month. So like. Um, bad debts would be like holidays, clothes, cars, general spending, putting things on credit card for no reason. Whereas good debt would be purchasing a house, purchasing assets, purchasing rights to a business or something like that. Yeah. Um, that's going to bring you either an income or a dividend or a capital appreciation of some description. Yeah. Um, over t- over a period of time. I was speaking to a friend of mine the other day. Um, he he's, he just bought a new house, mm-hmm. and I went around. And he was showing me. He wanted to show me through the plans that he'd got because he's planning on totally changing it. It's like a three-bed house. He's turning it into a four-bed house. And downstairs, it's quite a strange layout because it used to be a shop. It's all very yeah. like roomy. He's going to make it all open plan. He was showing me the stuff. And I was I was like, wow, it's going to look amazing when you've when you when you've completed this. It's quite a nice house, quite a nice area. And um, 
he was like, yeah, I said, I said, how much value do you think it's going to, it's going to add to the house? And anyway, he goes through some of the figures and I, and I said to him, you, you know, the amount, you, how much you gonna spend on it? And it ends up, I mean, he's not doing it for this reason, but it ends up actually being a really smart thing to do. It's going to add a lot of value to the house. Yeah. So it's going to cost him about 60 grand, Okay. but it's going to add on about a hundred and odd grand's worth it's of the house. Good investment. It's, it is a good investment. Yeah. However, yeah. there's many, many people out there that they still believe to this day that their home, that they live in is an asset. And they believe that's good debt. Yeah. But it, it's not. It really isn't, is it? it it's, it's, a, it's a great... Go on, why do you think it's, it's not? not? A ba- it's not... I wouldn't say it's the worst, but it, it, Robert Kiyosaki says it's still an asset. It's not an asset. It is a liability because it takes money out of your pocket every month. It doesn't put money in your pocket. It does both, though, doesn't it? Because it is going up in value as well. What if it's not going up in value? What if you live in the north where it's not going up in value? It's not going up in value for but years. You, but you are, but you are, uh, you are. But it will go up in value eventually. You eventually, are, you are, owning, but you are buying it. it. Okay, so it it it's becomes a it becomes it? an asset when it's gone up in value. At the minute, it's a liability. Yeah, I, I because it's costing mean. money. It's costing mortgage. It's costing insurance, maintenance. Hey, I mean, I, I'm all for renting where you live. Yeah, I know you're. I'm not. so. I'm not going to argue with you, but I do think I think it's a, a bit of a grey one. That yeah, I mean, it was, it's a grey. Anyway, let me. T- I was telling him my story, so he's going to he's going to make um, a fair bit of money. I said to him, "Well, are you going to remortgage it?" Mm. And he said, "No." I said, "Why?" And he said, basically, he doesn't like interest payments. Okay. And he'd rather just have much less and pay pay off the house as fast as possible. Right. Okay. So if he remortgages it. He doesn't have to pay more interest and whatnot. Yeah. I was like, "How much? How much interest are you paying?" Two percent. So if you could pull out like a hundred thousand yeah. pounds, you could invest that easily. Even if you did it badly, you could make ten percent return on your yeah. investment, and then you'd be making an extra eight percent. It's not even your money. It's like the, one of the cheapest loans you can get. Ever get? Yeah. And he was like, mm, some people just don't like but, it. There's no, which is fair enough. But to me, that is like really good debt. Yeah. yeah Remortgaging the house and you're investing it again smartly. You're going into very small interest, mm. but. Um, but some people are just in their head. They just debt. No, it's pay off debt. Pay off debt. And that's like I say, how I was brought up. Just pay it's off an old debt school thing, isn't it? It's a it's an old generation. Like my parents are like that. My grandparents are like that. It's an old generations. But I find a lot of the sort of younger generation are more. They're happy to get into debt. But not then, always for the right sort of not debt. Not for the right reasons. But they're happy to get into debt. Yeah. Um, there's more, there's more debt now than there ever has been in history, uh, and it's because people are very easily. They're very happy and very easily get into debt for. For whatever they want, but the problem the problem you got is a lot of people are doing it for the wrong sort of um, debt. So they're they're getting into debt to keep up with the Joneses and to to live that that sort of. Um, so would you buy the only way is Essex lifestyle and things like that? Would you buy furniture on finance for my rental property for your own property? No. Why? Because I just wouldn't. Why? <laughs> Is this going to be like a seven whys? Um, no, right. You need to answer one of the whys. I don't know, I I don't know why one. at the minute. I just wouldn't because to me, it's it's not actually making, it's not, it, it's, it, it's just not, it's not a, an if accruing it inter- asset. If it was interest free? Oh, if it's interest free. Or very low interest, 1%. Um, if it was interest free, then yes. 1%, 2% interest. Potentially. Why? Because it's, if it's very low interest or interest free. And as long as I can afford to pay it, that's fine. I feel there's a bit of a butt coming. No, there's no but, butt. Um, See, I wouldn't. Right, but I don't know why I wouldn't. I suppose it depends on what I was going to use. Because I, even <laughs> now, it's, it feels like it feel, like buying furniture, It just for example. It doesn't seem right to me. Buying, if it was not percent, then yeah. I would, if, if, if they, for instance, there's a sofa you could buy on not percent interest for, for a year... Then you'd be daft not to, as long as you can afford. As long as it wasn't going to, but as long as you can afford argue, it. Could you not argue that, like, let's let's say you're two grand, you're going to spend on a sofa, yeah, right? or on a suite, and you're going to get it on interest free. You're going to pay mm-hmm. for it monthly. You could then use that two grand to invest in something that gave you more money back. To, so, so to you could it, say it was the smart thing to do. We've already got the low interest there, or interest free. Mm. A lot of them have. A lot of them are, are interest free for a certain amount of time, aren't they? Yeah, and then yeah. they sting you at the end. So I suppose in that case, you use the interest free if you know that you can afford to pay it off over the six months. Yeah, it's all about budgeting and knowing what you can and can't afford. Yeah. the danger of going into debt and doing things like, well, I can use that money for this, I can use that money from this, is you can over leverage. Yeah, and if you over leverage it, and then. And then something goes wrong with this and you need to pay them off and you can't. So then that interest comes up and then you've got to drag money over here and you get into that sp- debt spiral. Do you know what I've seen happen many times with some like with people I know and things like that is they get like a sofa on finance, £100, and they get a TV on finance, £40. And they, had, they've, they've all this sort of stuff on not percent or very low interest. 
because they think, well, I can keep the money that I was going to spend and keep it in the bank. But then they spend that money in the bank on just living and eating out and just living it up. Yeah. But they've still got all this debt over here that's got not getting paid every month. And then it's exactly what you say. It's a vicious circle. And it comes to um, pay it off. You've got to be very, very sensible. You've got to be very, very sensible. Um, and if you're going to get into debt for for to build assets, that's brilliant. But you still, even then, you've still got to be very sensible. Of right? course. Debt should be taken incredibly serious. Um, don't, don't think of it as, oh, I'll just get some debt to buy an asset. No, it's got to be a good asset and it's got to be the right sort of debt. Yeah, I, think oh, anyway. I, I agree. Of mm. I, I totally agree. I think it can. it's a very powerful tool. Yeah. And we're very lucky that we live in a society where we can use that tool. It's a very powerful yeah. tool for leverage because mm. you can use, you, you know, if you can borrow money to invest and make more money, it's like you're making free money. Yeah. yeah. So, I agree with you. You, you, you know, you can use it very sensibly, what do you think very like, effectively. What do you think about 0% interest credit cards and things like that? Well, what I I used to use that when I was um, when I first got my because back when I was when I was about I don't know twenty my yeah. car insurance was very high okay and it was kind of a case of you can either pay it off all in front and yeah. it's like a grand yeah or you can pay like I don't know what it was a month maybe one hundred and twenty pound a month or whatever and it worked out about five hundred quid more expensive yeah. so what I used to do is I used to get on an interest free credit card. And then just pay the credit card off monthly mm -hmm. instead of the car insurance. It's just been wise. It's, it's been savvy, about isn't it? Five hundred quid. It's been or savvy. It was. And like even like moving moving credit cards that have debt to not percents. It's just being savvy with your money. And, and then you can move yourself. that debt onto another one. You can yeah. consolidate the debts onto one credit card. Pay it. This is the key, though. You pay it off. Pay it off. Yeah. That's the key. what people yeah. do is they just get more debt and more debt and more debt and more debt and more debt. And then biggest tip I, I've seen this happen many times as well is people move a balance from one credit card to a zero percent, and then suddenly they've got a, a credit card with zero balance, but a two thousand pound credit limit. And then suddenly they say they're not going to spend it, they're not going to use it, but like two months time they've got two grand on there. So then they've got two credit cards with two thousand pound on each, mm. and it's just cycle it's about cycle. being disciplined isn't it De very disciplined yeah, disciplined is disciplined. key understanding never go into debt if you're not going to invest that money mm. you can if you're going to invest the money so like for example buying a house mm -hmm. you'd be an idiot to not go into debt and buy a house assuming uh, yeah. you can get so to just to buy out cash outright well you wouldn't do that because why would you buy one house when you could use that cash and buy four houses leverage isn't it leverage yeah. and you can and you and you can you can be creative, yep. and I do very strongly believe in good debt if it's an investment. Mm -hmm. About, I think that's the rule of thumb, really. If it's an investment, like we said earlier, good debt. If it's an investment, if you're if you're using that money to get greater returns than what yeah. you're putting in, then it, then it's then it's good and it's leverage. As long as you're disciplined, yeah. As long as it's manageable, mm -hmm. and you're not overstretching yourself. So if I something goes wrong, it's one of the things that we talk about with the buy refurbish refinance strategy. Yeah, is people borrow the money to put in. And then when the when they want to go to refinance it, mm. and it doesn't work because the valuer said it's worth less than it is, they're yeah. then scuppered. They're so, yeah, they're screwed, aren't they? So it's da it's a dangerous game when you're playing with you, debt. You just got to be careful. Um, I think you've got to be super super careful. It's a business decision at the end of the day, and you've you've got to look at it from all angles, not just a uh, oh yeah, I can get I can get a couple of ten grand on on a, as a loan and just uh, waste it. You got to invest it. Well, it's like anything. Invest it wisely. You've got to. Yeah. So. Have you got any, any stories where you've you, you've used good debt? Um, yeah, I used. Okay, so the, the most recent case of me using debt was what I, how I, how I joined the academy. That was debt. That was that was via credit card. Go on. So I I, I paid like a, a two thousand pound deposit. I'm um, just on debit card, and then I I spoke to and this is see this is irresponsible of of Barclay card I would say. Um, so my credit limit on my Barclay card was four and a half thousand pound. Um, obviously, you know the academy, you know how much it is. Um, that's not going to cut it. Um, so I needed to raise about £10,000. Uh, I didn't have £10,000. I had about a couple of grand in my bank, uh, maybe four grand left. I had four grand, I paid two, so I had a couple of grand left. Uh, and I literally made a 20 minute phone call to Barclay Card and asked them just to increase my credit limit. And I got, they basically said to me, Look, we'll, we'll text you your new credit limit in the next 24 hours. And about literally half an hour later, I got a text from Barclay Card saying my new credit limit is now £16,800. So they put my credit limit up from £4,500 to £16,500 in the space of a 20-minute phone call. Now, yes, I've got very, I had, I've got very good credit. Uh, I've got no, no arrears. I've never had arrears. So I'm a good client. I'm a good customer to them. Um, but still, how irresponsible is that? In Why is that 20 minutes. In 20 minutes. Yeah, but like, if, you're, if you've got, what, what, are they, what are they supposed to do? Like, I just think bring you for an interview? I don't know, but I just thought it was. I, I just I remember thinking, 
that's a little bit too quick. Because But why? Because they didn't even ask me what I wanted it for, not really. And I didn't I d yeah, I never discussed what I wanted it for. So I just think it's a little bit too easily too easily available. You reckon? You imagine if you were irresponsible, right? And you've yeah, got good credit. It's not them being irresponsible. No, no, I know, I know. And the thing okay. is, if you were irresponsible and you waited and didn't pay them back, the next time they'd go on your bike, mate. Yeah, but yeah. You could, perhaps, you just yeah, got, perhaps. You just got a chance, and as long as you've so, got good credit and you're paying it off, they trust you. But incidentally, um, I, so I, I I paid for the academy, and then I paid that card off within like seven or eight weeks, and I just dropped the credit limit back down to four grand. Um, so Why? I, I never understand people that do that. Well, because I just did because I'd, I, say I'd yeah. rather have a bigger credit rating. Yeah, because then if I need it now, nah, if you need it again now for you'll something, yeah. you to make a phone call. I got waste twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah, but they might say no. That's a good point, actually. It's a very good. Why point. Why would you drop it down? You're just taking the like. Do you not trust yourself? Well, yeah, no, because I've got four credit cards and all of them have got zero balance. Yeah, so like, and so why, got, like, I'd, I'd, I'd want to. I'd, I'd rather it if mine was a million. It's a good point, actually. I didn't even. I didn't really think about it like that. I just thought it's, the, na it's the natural. Though. Yeah, it's the, it's the it thing. Is. Oh, don't want debt. Cut that down. Bum, bum, bum. Restrict, it, I, restrict, restrict. I didn't even think about that until you just mentioned that. I should have just left it where it is because um, I didn't need the money. I don't need the money now. But um, it, it would be handy, wouldn't it? Yeah. If if you need if something come about and you wanted it, you would. It's there. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I might have to have a phone call with them on the way home and get that up. <laughs> Even though I don't need it. I don't need it. I just want it. <laughs> just want it. <laughs> okay, it's um, strong. Going to Vegas. Yeah, let's go Vegas. <laughs> let's go to the bar. Let's we can go to, go to a bar. Um, <laughs> Actually, you could probably afford it on that credit card. You yeah, can actually afford your own bar. That would be amazing. Anyway, uh, it's now time for this. Okay, so on the news this week, we're going to take a look at the world's worst B&B. &B. Right, let me just explain to you very quickly yeah. the story. So, Tottenham Hotspur <coughs> fan. Um, I think he deserved it just for being a Tottenham Hotspur fan, to be honest, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> is shocked to discover his £100 a night room in Amsterdam was actually just a shipping container of a portable toilet inside, <laughs> right? So... Oh, that's brilliant. Basically, Tottenham were playing Ajax, yeah. massive game, and he booked on Airbnb. He goes along... Um, he, he's driving in the taxi up and down the road. He's like, "Where, where the hell's my, my cottage?" <laughs> 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 Turns out on the on the side of the road is this shipping container, which has got three matches. Three of his mates all staying in this cottage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just three matches on the floor and a uh, portable toilet uh, to, to the uh, to the side, and that that, that was it. <laughs> is it. Does it even look nice inside, or does it look like just a shipping container? Um, it looks... I mean, Nick can probably put pictures up on the screen. It actually looks okay. But the mattresses were just thrown on the floor, weren't they? Yeah, it, it's got a little heater, it's got a window. It looks okay, actually, but it, but it is just a shipping container. Now, the problem with it is, he then of, he then thought, stuff this, yeah. and went to stay in a hotel, yeah. asked the guy for a reef, <coughs> and the guy said no, because it was there. Yeah. Um, he put a complaint into Airbnb. Airbnb... Um, refunded in the money themselves okay. to let their one look bad but then the council because literally what they'd done is they just dumped this shipping container on the pavement on the side of a road oh, really? it wasn't like land they owned <laughs> or anything All right. so that was the, that was the big problem and, and yeah. then they then they towed it away so for me there's two issues with it issue number one is that um, is that it wasn't their land so obviously yeah. that's obviously wrong and, Ill and illegal issue number two is they referred to it in the ad as a cottage well, it Right, so it but wasn't a cottage. It was clearly not a cottage. No. No, 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 I mean, what you rent out is a cottage. Yeah, my my, my mine's definitely a cottage. This was just a shipping container. <laughs> having <laughs> said ship. that, having said that, I think if they let's say you had some land that you owned yeah. and you got planning permission to put some shipping containers up and you advertised it as a shipping container, it could be quite retro. Can you not think people would love that if it was if they were done up nice? I think so. Yeah, people go camping, don't they? People are happy to stay in a tent. <laughs> you ever been camping? Ever been camping? Yeah. yeah, I've been loads. And do you like it? No, no, I can't stand it. But I, 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 can't, I don't know what's I, worse. And means since I was about twelve. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's worse: rocking up to a campsite with a tent, or rocking up to the side of the road into a shipping. The container. worst camping experience because it'll be had. ridiculously hot in there as well. The worst camping experience it's got a little heater in there as well. Yeah, but if that's summer, a metal container, it's going to be like an oven. 
three blokes in a freaking metal box. Come on, man. We're Porterloo. <laughs> like, come on. The, the worst camping experience I ever had, I went to this campsite and it was on like a slight hill. And we were like, ah, that's probably not a bad thing because it could be quite, you know, like a, like a reclining chair. Like, <laughs> right, okay. Thought, you know, so you lean, lean back. It could, right. be, it could be reasonably comfortable. But what actually happened was, is in the night, in the night, we just sort of like fell to the bottom of the <laughs> to the bottom of the tent, and then it rained and leaked. So we we're just like oh, lying and like. Um, Why would anybody go camping? That's not enjoyable, is it? It's not a holiday, is it? The only reason I would go camping. Do you know what? Kids, we, we're about to go camping. Oh yeah. No, you are. Oh yes. <laughs> we oh, yeah, we are yeah. going camping. Yeah. Like no, we're not in a tent, though, are we? To, like we're leaving. If you guys are watching this on, like, sat live on Saturday, we're, we're on, leaving tonight. We're on the plane, pretty much, at we're, this sort of time. At this sort of time, yeah, we're going now. But we're not going camping. Yeah, camp, yeah, camping, we are. Mate. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Mate, it, I've, I've seen the thing. It's shipping it, it's... containers. <laughs> 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 and we're paying, no, it's not. We're paying good money we're to paying be there. We're a lot of money. <laughs> no, but it's not camping. It, it's like, it's, it's, it's like, it's a building. It's got, it's, is it really? It's, it's both. Yeah, camping's fun. <laughs> is it really? It is really, yeah. Right, so um, my one. bottom line is is that I actually think it's totally acceptable. When I, when I get up and talk about uh, service accommodation, I say there's no legislation that you know you could literally what, as long as you're clear and honest about it. So why did Airbnb ban it off? Why because they banned it off the site? Why was that? It's illegal because it's misdescribed. It's, it's, it's mis-sold. Sold. It is illegal. It is illegal because they just put it on the side of a road. Oh yeah, okay, but it's misdescribed. It was described as a cottage. Yeah, it's not. It's a shipping shipping container. Yeah. So if he described it as a shipping container, because Airbnb don't could care that he it, doesn't own the land. Could does you call he? it like a retro? Although apparently, I was I was reading on the article apparently. Um, someone did put an igloo up in their garden. Yeah. Well, and since Airbnb don't care that you don't own the land, because they don't ask them questions, do they? They don't care, but... All they care about is that it's described properly. So if he described it as a... Uh, this is their reason. Misrepresented or fraudulent yeah. listings of no place on our platform. So mis- Yeah, so he's represented it as a cottage. It's not a cottage. So if he just said a metal box... So if you had a picture of it like that... Yeah. Doesn't look like a cottage, does it? It looks a bit like a caravan, though. It looks it? like a static home, yeah. If you just put mobile home, mobile home, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. It, do you know what it looks like? Do you know on building sites? Yeah. Do you know when you see like the builders? They, they normally put a couple of containers on site, and they're for like builders to have their lunch and 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 go well, to do you know the toilet. It's the same as well, like, very similar. It's, it's one of them that they've just painted. That's all it is. I used to do a bit of work with the BBC on 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 some of their shoots, like a consultant, and okay. and. and and it looks, it sounds really glamorous, but it really isn't. Yeah. And a lot of it is like that, where, where yeah, you go yeah. and have lunch and where the changing rooms and stuff, it's mm. all like, it looks just like a shipping container. Yeah. Um, so I don't think it's too bad. I think, I you know, you, so I'm bad. sure there'll be someone out there that can, you know, buy a bit of Could land. Could you imagine though? Put something in your garden. <laughs> Could you imagine when you rock up to Amsterdam, you think you're going to have a bang and weekend. In and your the cottage. Taxi, the taxi driver's going up and down the road and you're like, I can't find the cottage. I'm, you're like, is, it? that, is that, is, <laughs> is that, that it? skip it? <laughs> <laughs> it's that metal box at the side of the road. You'd be like, this is just the worst holiday ever. Oh, it's very funny. Check oh, out the article if you haven't seen it. I'm sure we'll, we'll put a link, but it's very, very funny. Right, it's now time for this. Okay, it's now time for your questions and our answers. Uh, before we go into that, if you want to ask us a question in the future, probably one of the best places to do it is obviously on YouTube. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube as well. Um, or you can go on the Facebook group. We normally do a Facebook Live at some point during the week. Uh, the Facebook group is Property Investors with Samuel Leeds. Join that group, and then you can, you can ask us questions on there as well, which we'll then answer on the show. Also, if you could do us a favor, if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, please do leave us a review, as long as it's a good review. Don't leave us a bad review. You can leave a bad review about Alice Dare, but if it's about me, please be please be a good review. I, I don't mind bad reviews. No, he's used to it now. He's written a book. Um well, that was hard. <laughs> right, okay. What, so taking all the bad reviews or my comment? Your comment. Okay. Um, so first question, here you go. This was from <laughs> Harry Jackson. This was from uh, on the Facebook group. And his question is this. Alastair Cunningham. Yes. What is the best way you find BMV deals? This is a topic we've actually discussed quite in depth. Um, and Simon's done uh, quite a few videos about it. I'm sure Nick can have a link to some things. Is that all right, Nick? Some of the some, some of the videos Simon's done, um, but some of the ways I do it, I look for properties that are a little bit run down. Um, so a, a tip is look at carpets. If they are like 
Was your personal house BMW? No, not really. Um, so if the carpets are a bit old and dated, look for old furniture, look for decoration. It's a bit poor and run down. Um, I'm not saying that your house is run down, but your personal house, I'm not trying to suggest that it's old for day and run down. No, it's not. I know. I'm just, just clarifying that he lives in a nice house. Thank you. Right. Okay. So, um, <laughs> it's actually a very, very nice house. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. So too uh, nice of anything. Oh, for goodness <laughs> me. I don't even know where we're at. Right. Anyway, look at carpets, look at decoration. Um, look for this Hold on, your big tip for finding oh, a BMV just listen to is me. to look at carpets. Yes. Okay, listen there you go. Listen to me. Right. Carpet right, got crap loads of them. No. <laughs> Old, dirty carpets, discoloured wallpapers because of uh, like lots of signs of age in, in rundown property. Now, the reason I say go for rundown properties and age and discoloration and all that sort of stuff is because they're the ones you, you're going to be able to get a bargain on. Now, BMV is... Below market, uh, below market value. Now, you're not going to see a property listed as a, this is BMV. If you do, it's very rare. You have to negotiate a BMV. And the way I do that is by picking all these high, all these points uh, and sort of emphasizing how much they're going to cost to put right um, and then negotiating a, a below market value deal. I remember last time we talked about BMV, we had a big argument about what BMV, because you said there's BMV and then there, there's below market value and it's below true, true market, market value. value yeah. And I said, no, there isn't. There's yeah. below asking price and below market value. Yeah. And we uh, argued about it for a we while. We don't need to argue about it because I kind of agree with you now. Do you? <laughs> yeah, I do kind of. Yes! <laughs> so we can move on from that. <laughs> um, right, okay. So maybe maybe uh, we can bypass that <laughs> uh, or we can cut that bit out. Anyway, <laughs> it doesn't matter. B- BMV, listen, you're only going to get that if you learn how to negotiate. You've got to be a, a killer negotiator. Um, and you're not going to negotiate on a property that's immaculate. You need to negotiate on a property that's a little bit run down and tired. Um, there's there's loads out there. So one because I because the end of the day, less people are because most people because they're buying for themselves. Yep. Don't want a house nope. that looks horrible. So if the house looks horrible. There's gonna be less buyers. Therefore, yep. the, the the seller has got less choice. Mm-hmm. And then you can you can you can knock them down. Hundred percent. So a, an example of one I've just secured recently um, that I'm buying myself um, is a property that's worth about one hundred and five thousand. Uh, we've got it for 72 grand. And the reason we got it for 72 grand is because it is it needs a full refurb. Um, but the refurb, the the vendors who's got it, they've been quoted like 35, 35 to 40,000 pounds to do the refurb on it. I know I can get the refurb done for 12 to 15, but I'm not going to tell them that. I let them still think it's 35 to 40,000 pounds. So when I went into my, ro- my, my price of like low 70s, to them that's still fair because 70 plus 30 is what it's really worth. Um, mm. I can get the refurb done for ten, twelve thousand, pounds, maybe fifteen max. I found um, a brilliant yeah. BMV property in Amsterdam. It was this little cottage, cool side of the road. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> serious discount on it. It's was it? in the process of being towed away, so you act fast. Act but, fast. Act fast. Right. Next question. Um, I I did see one on YouTube. Okay, so this is a question from Alex Snelson, and it's on YouTube. Alex Snelson. Snelson, yes. Snelson. Is there a minimum age to allow you to release equity or refinance your current home after adding value? Uh, do you mean an age as in for the yourself? Um, I'm assuming if you've already got a mortgage, then you'll be fine. So basically, it's mortgage age, isn't it? mortgage age age, mortgage age. So like 18 or 21. So 18 for our. If it's your personal, but 21 is as a buy to let. Well, it, um, it, is this for a remortgage? It, it, yeah. Well, no, no, it doesn't say remortgage. It no. just says refinance your current home after adding value. Well, if, so you're I'm refi- assuming, if you're refinancing, it means you've already got finance. Refinance. Yeah, refinance. So therefore, you can get finance. So no, there's no minimum. So age. it's just your mortgage age. So as long as you're over the age for a mortgage, I would, I would, but speak to a broker. Um, be, it'd be very, very good. Um, right. Okay. So another question from Dale Lancaster. Last one. Where's this? YouTube. This is on YouTube. Um, hi, my name is Dale. Love hey, the, Dale. Love the podcast. Learn Thank a lot. you, Dale. <coughs> it really does Shit, mean man. a lot. Gets us right. Gets us there. there. Gets us. Right. My question is, with a property that is shared ownership, how would you go about getting the best possible deal or is there not one? I'm going to let you answer that question because I don't like shared ownership and I know you don't know much about it. So I'm going to let you answer it. <laughs> Sorry, I don't, I don't understand the question. I'll read okay, it again. So um, if he's got a property that's got shared ownership. Right. How would you go about getting the best? No, sorry. But what does that he, even mean? He wants to get the best possible deal on a shared ownership property. So do you know in Right Move you see properties that are yeah, available yeah, yeah. for shared ownership? He wants to get the best deal on that. Is that what it says? Yeah. 
Really, to be honest, we don't, both of us don't agree with shared ownership because it, it, it's it's a government scheme that will probably be out, out to benefit the government and not you. Um, so I, I don't agree with it. I don't like it and I don't advise it. Um, what do you think? I've never bought a shared ownership property, I wouldn't. so and I wouldn't do so. I can't. I, I don't feel qualified to comment on it. But thanks for your thanks for your question. Don't, the best deal is don't. Uh, if, personally, if you've I only got forty grand, just go and buy a house up north. Yeah, <laughs> oh. I would actually rent where you live and then use that money. If you've got forty grand to invest or twenty grand, whatever, I would just rent where you live. Where's good up north? We can buy a house for forty grand. Hull, Hull, go to Hull. Um, right, one more question. Or oh, did you say that was the last one? We've got I time did, for one but, more. But, 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 Right, got 20 years we've got, we got 20 years right, got okay. time for one more one more one more years. one more right okay ah this is from richard barron hey richard uh it's on youtube again hey richard on YouTube. it's not a question it's a statement okay well that's a nice way to end we can yeah, end we on can a end. statement from look this is how honored we are that you've commented richard we are ending the show i don't even know what it is but we're I so do. confident i like it it better not be praising you and not me. It is. Oh, wow. Where did Richard, Richard Barron. Richard. Remember that? Richard Barron. Al is looking slim and trim. And on that bombshell, <laughs> thank you very much. Have an awesome week. Guys, we will see you next week. Do not forget to subscribe. We're back Saturday at 7 p.m. See you then. See you guys.